Uh, <clears throat> hi, everyone. I'm Kapil, and I'm a second year PhD student at um, Cornell at C Lab. Um, and today I'm going to be presenting about the uh, very first MDO optimization um, project I did to learn OpenMDAO and following uh, John's YouTube videos. Um, those videos, the int intro music is like up there with Game of Thrones music. <laughs> yeah. It's very good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be presenting um, about the multidisciplinary design optimization of a noble offshore system. Um, this is to learn both uh, MDO and then the hydrodynamics. So I'll get started. Um, and then this is not a published work. or um, It's not even in, like submitted to any conference yet, but I'm looking for a lot of um, feedbacks and suggestions to improve on. Um, anything I can take. Um, so <clears throat> today, um, I'll start with why uh, offshore systems are complex coupled uh, system. There was another presentation um, that talked about the floating wind, um, wind turbines. So like that, there are other novel offshore systems, uh, and those are, um, are can be viewed as complex coupled systems. And then I'll talk about how to integrate with OpenMDAO, and this is much more uh, for uh, offshore modeling community to like look into OpenMDAO and what are the options. And then I'll uh, do a case study of a simple noble offshore system. Um, yeah, and then I'll get into the results and then what I learned, what are the issues I need to reiterate on, that kind of thing. So traditionally, the offshore systems uh, that are uh, studied are big um, oil and gas platforms or other very large offshore structures. And those uh, can also be viewed as a uh, MDO problem. But today, I'm focusing a little more on the novel offshore systems. So we can define them as having like new functionalities, new requirements. Uh, you can have new objectives and constraints. Um, and then you can couple them with new disciplines, and you have a novel offshore system. For example, uh, floating wind turbines, wave energy converters, there has been a lot of work on the uh, wake arrays and wake optimization. Similarly, aquaculture vessels and marine robotics. So to uh, integrate OpenMDAO with uh, offshore design tools, the hydrodynamics is very central. So we want to model the, the behavior of the body in the uh, ocean wave environment. So there are a couple of uh, methods that have been used in the optional design community, starting with a very simple analytical approximation um, called Morrison's formula. And you've seen, you might have seen this with like floating wind turbines to model the hydrodynamics of the regular uh, spars or like regular cylinder, cylindrical bodies. So it's used, uh, similarly there are other surrogate models people use, for example, for a little more complex wake arrays. If you have a lot of wave energy converter in an array or you want to optimize the, uh, the configuration of the, 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 those wave energy converters. But there's much more, like, uh, much more general solver uh, that is based on the linear hydrodynamics um, that is applicable to any geometries, novel or traditional. So we'll, we'll look into that. Um, the, and the computational um, part of the uh, offshore modeling design community, there's few tools that are being uh, widely used. And all of these are based on frequency domain and then the boundary element method uh, because it is very cheap and then uh, computationally cheap. And then you can just ignore the uh, viscous term in the NSC equation because for large marine structures, that is a reasonable uh, trade-off. So the tools like, there is YMIT, which is very robust, but it is not open source. Um, so you've seen, uh, there, there's a lot of um, surrogate modeling based on the, the data collected from YMIT or to verify our own analytical approximations. Similarly, there's NEMO. Uh, NEMO is open source, and there's Bemuse, and then Capitan. These are all open source, but they're uh, mostly NEMO and Capitan. They're uh, based on Fortran. They wrap up Fortran. Um, so Capitan wraps up NEMO uh, with Python, and I'm going to be using that. The problem with these tools is that there is something called irregular frequencies, and irregular frequencies are um, they arise in the, uh, the boundary element method because of how these boundary integral equations are formulated. So, so for some frequencies, they don't um, give reliable results. So they sometimes like overestimate the hydrodynamic coefficients. Um, so to integrate uh, these tools I just mentioned with OpenMDAO, uh, for, for gradient-based optimization, um, we need gradients. 
and there's like a lot of options for that and um, continuous agent formulation, finite differencing, and then hoping for the best basically, or discrete uh, adjoint method. But um, yeah, having these uh, differentiable hydrodynamic BEM solver will open door to a lot of other modeling, to a couple other many disciplines. But today, uh, this is since like very much like work in progress. Um, I'm gonna be using finite difference for whatever reason uh, to just get it done um, and have something better than like nothing, basically. So um, the novel offshore system uh, I'm gonna be trying to optimize is Perl. So Perl is basically an autonomous floating platform that can serve um, as a recharge, recharge uh, platform or um, it can uh, recharge the AUVs and then transfer the data to um, near shore um, servers through the uh, LEO satellites. So there's like a couple of disciplines here. Um, if you wanna learn more about Perl, um, that is my paper, uh, that is the paper from my advisor. Um, um, you can look into that um, on the details of the Perl. But my problem is basically optimizing Perl. Um, that will be part of my, uh, most of the part of my thesis, I guess. Um, so for the, the, the system, considering the system requirements for Perl, the, the platform must, uh, must basically uh, float stably to minimize the antenna misalignment loss. Um, if the, the, there's an iridium antenna, um, if it moves a lot because of the uh, ocean waves, then we lost uh, some data transfer. So we wanna minimize that. And we wanna uh, be able to uh, have Perl be able to generate enough power from the solar panels, assuming um, for this uh, optimization, assuming eight hours a day of sunlight for all functions. And then uh, it should be able to transfer data. And also this is uh, assumption of one gigabytes per day. So, um, some AUVs, they have larger storage, up to one terabytes. I think Bluefin, Bluefin uh, the AUV, um, they have more data storage. So yeah, it, but this is just a reasonable assumption for this project. And we wanna recharge the AUVs, assuming again, um, 1900 watt hours per day. So um, another thing Pro can do, it's, it's autonomous. Um, so it can move around, but we're assuming uh, only 0.4 meter per second because it should sometimes like uh, move against the current. So that is assumed as 0.3. And um, it should basically stay up, up for 24 hours. That means like it should have some power to do like uh, basic functions. So the, uh, the design the statement, uh, here we wanna minimize the, uh, the variance of Perl's motion. Um, with respect to some constraints on the hydrostatic equilibrium. Um, and then the cost should be, and the cost chosen here is arbitrary, but cost, uh, some cost constraints, and then how much, uh, bad, uh, how much uh, energy storage we have available, and, and then the minimum link margin to communicate the data to the, uh, through the Iridium satellite. And then we wanna m uh, move Perl, uh, that is 0.4 meter per second, yeah. Um, so a couple of disciplines here is, first is hydro. Um, I tried separating the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic, but had some issues with it. So uh, since I'm doing FT anyway, a couple, I uh, joined them in one group, so one discipline. So basically we wanna have the hydrostatic equilibrium solved for whatever target displacement we will have. And then we will, uh, that discipline will calculate the something called response amplitude operator. Basically it's just a transfer function uh, for heap motion only. Um, and then we wanna do some kind of link margin um, calculation to see how much uh, link uh, margin we have for, to transmit the data. Uh, and that should be greater than 16 dB. Uh, although it's called propulsion, but just calculating the power required to move per steadily. And um, total power, uh, power harvest is another discipline that basically calculates the total power generated and then what can be stored, what are used, that kind of thing. So this is the, um, the extended design uh, metrics of the problem I'm trying to solve with this uh, project. So there's one uh, feedback loop in the energy because the mass of the battery will change the target displacement. So that is the only um, feedback loop I have over there. Um, yeah. So um, I chose the MDF architecture based on the, the design optimization book. Um, that uh, even if it, because the uh, Capitan is very noisy and it has that irregular frequencies. So the assumption was, okay, maybe it will uh, 
trick the optimizer it may not ever converge, so we will just start with this architecture. Um, and then I use the NL GBS solver with the Atkin relaxation. And then um, because of some issues with the partial calculations and how long it took, at the end I, the results are for the total derivative was approximated using the, the finite difference. Um, that significantly lowered the, the time, so. So the, uh, the optimization results are basically the, the dimensions, optimum dimensions for the uh, pearl. So the first variable design variable was the, the diameter of the top float. And um, similarly, the thickness, the damping plate, support, uh, support structure, and then the, the radius of the support. Um, and then there's another uh, variable for the solar panel area fraction. So how, uh, what fraction of the total surface area available would be for PV because that would dictate how much power is available. Um, so that was also the design variable. And then that is the basically um, below $3,000, which is arbitrary again. But uh, the optimizer was able to get, um, reduce the, the heave motion response uh, from the nominal design uh, using um, these variables. For the final design, we have a significantly lower uh, motion, the heave motion. Um, and then the, the, the the amount of time it takes to solve and then the convergence process all depends on how many frequencies you're trying to uh, optimize for. So I had some, um, some experience with like less frequencies, more frequencies, and I have a result here, which is, in both cases, it's more or less like, uh, does like similar kind of, uh, finds the similar optimum. Uh, and this is what the objective function convergence looks like. Um, my assumption is because the, for the sum of the frequencies, the hydrous uh, dynamic uh, coefficients are overestimated. So you will see uh, jumps like this. And I have some other uh, experiments I did where like the, the jumps were like really wild. Uh, and then, um, but yeah, for this optimization uh, results, I look like this. And then it was able to converge with it a few 25 iterations. Um, so the initial design was that, uh, the nominal design uh, we started with was on the left, and then the, the final design is on the right. And so basically it enlarged the heat plate, which uh, explains why it was necessary for the, the heat motion uh, damping, because that acts as a damping plate. And also um, the thick, uh, the, it was able to um, reduce the, uh, or increase the thickness of the plate for the a hydrostatic equilibrium too. So there were like very, a lot of issues with the optimization, which is for the next, uh, next iteration of this work. Uh, for some design, the hydrostatic equilibrium fails to converge, and then it converges, uh, it fails silently. So uh, it does, when it doesn't, the optimization doesn't converge, then I go back and see uh, the hydrostatic report file. Um, and then there, are, again, the irregular frequencies effect because uh, overestimation of the coefficients. So you will see uh, a lot of times certain jumps in objective functions. And that could be both resonance or the irregular frequency, but there is no way of knowing in Capitan like uh, for irregular geometries. For regular geometries, there's been work that shows like for the, some frequencies you'll have what are called irregular frequencies. But for um, irregular geometry or novel geometry, there is no way of knowing. Um, and then a lot of time you can smooth them uh, but I didn't do it. This was more of exploration, so I um, got along with it and tried to find the optimum that way. Uh, another thing is I use a package called MessMagic. Um, it uses constant density for uh, setting up the inertia matrix, which is not true in my case because the, uh, the materials are different, so it should have a different um, density, so that should also be fixed for the next iteration. And then I need to investigate a little deeper into why would, uh, or how to make it converge um, through assembling the total derivatives rather than approximating it. Um, um, yeah, and then different selection of frequencies will give you different results. Um, and then um, also look, I need to look deeper into the, the convergence of the both solvers available in OpenMDAL. And there are a couple of benefits I found um, trying to understand this system and the model system using OpenMDU rather than implementing uh, my own sequential optimization. First thing is it helped to understand the complexity of the engineering system, uh, engineered system. So you, uh, to model uh, in OpenMDU, you have to think it in like various subsystems and components. 
and then um, that helps with understanding. Another uh, significant advantage was the exploration of data flow, the, pro the XDSM diagram basically, and how uh, things work uh, in your system when you have different subsystems or when you want to add more subsystems. Um, and then the ease of choosing optimizers, um, trying out different architectures of MDO, derivative calculations, and again, M different solvers are already available in MPs. I didn't try any of them, but um, it looks like a, a lot of choices to uh, increase the uh, complexity of the fidelity of the uh, system. And another thing is uh, recording and visualization I used extensively, especially it records everything in the SQLite uh, file, which you can have another Python file to look into the, uh, the, the, the values that are being recorded. I didn't know before today, uh, yesterday, about the opt view reports. So I was just doing another um, script to look into the database file and uh, taking out the uh, values to see into what is happening. Um, but opt view some, uh, seems like a better choice. Another thing is developers are very active on the Stack Overflow. Every time I, act, I ask questions, either John or Justin answers, uh, which is very um, helpful. Um, and then um, other, uh, there's been like a lot of open MDAO questions already been asked. So if you filter for open MDO tag in the Stack Overflow, a lot of questions have been already answered and that helped a lot to learn open MDO. So uh, to conclude, uh, and then the, for the future steps, again, several issues with convergence of the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic um, solver. Um, and then since I use finite difference, I'm planning to look into either a complex step or go to the scary word adjoints um, and figure out that and then uh, develop a framework for adjoint best hydrodynamic design optimization for things like Perl. Um, uh, it could be used for the web energy converters too. And then at the end, couple the um, underwater step optimization uh, for hydrodynamic stability and also less drag. And this could be challenging because then you'll have a lot of solvers, uh, much, more for, um, um, much more complexity in the problem. And then another thing on the plans is basically think uh, Perl into a subsystem in the lower level, basically trying to model the battery SOC, the state of charge, the PV panels, and then the docking dynamics, which was not um, included this time, but that's in the uh, future. Um, and then I wanna thank um, Sophia, Anna Sophia, who is an undergrad, um, and then our po uh, postdoc in our lab, Dr. Arju Hassankani, for help with most of the calculations in other disciplines like satellites and powers. Um, and then I have my contact and my advisor's contact there. And I'm uh, open for questions or suggestions, feedbacks, anything. Thank you. I have a, a comment, not a question. You apologized for using finite difference. You may not have apologized, but you seemed a little sheepish. I just wanted to let you know that actually quite a lot of the work presented today used finite difference in some part of it. Uh, Anil's work used finite difference. Um, I know Ping used finite difference to semi-analytically to generate a, a, an initial DA foam. So kind of a comment for the, especially for the industry folks, using finite difference, even though it, it may be the root of all evil, according to uh, Keem's book. And, and um, me, it's, it's the root yeah, of all evil. Um, it, it's possible that it'll work just fine, and you may only need derivatives for the really expensive parts of your code. Uh, that being said, you should talk to Daniel Ingram, who's going to raise his hand now and wave. Uh, don't differentiate your own BEM code. Use, use the one that he's already hooked up with OpenMDAO that oh, cool. has derivatives. He'll give you a hand. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you. Any questions for Kapil? Hey, uh, thanks for the talk, I really enjoyed it. Uh, quick question for you, so the, the Perl concept, I'm not familiar with it, so I'll, uh, I'm gonna ask a question about the concept itself. Is the antenna on a gimbal, so it can actually like track the satellite, or is it fixed on the platform, so you are limited to it heaving and swaying and, and all that stuff? For this design, it's not in the gimbal. Yeah, it, um, it, it is basically attached to the, but yeah, that could be a future plans, basically. I'm just wondering, you know, satellites go overhead, right? You, yeah. You're, it's, it's, it, it's adding more uh, multi-body multi dynamics to it. The satellite's going overhead. You kind of want to track as you're moving, but you need to track. Um, it might help your link budget uh, 
designs and, and all that yeah. stuff. So I just want to mention that. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, we were trying to model the, the loss due to the heave motion um, on the... Right. The, yeah. Um, yeah, but, but then like, could, yeah. But like swaying and all that, you, 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 I'm sure you have some losses there too, right? Yeah. Uh, which uh, some, some, some sort of tracking um, and yeah. erroring out that might, might help, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Yeah. Good luck. The other details on the, the docking and then the antenna, um, uh, that, those are in like the paper uh, I mentioned, my advisor's paper. Oh, it doesn't go back, okay. Uh, but yeah, basically, um, yeah. I have a question about your software choice. So I remember the slide that you showed that had all of the different types of the EM codes and things, and you said that you chose your El Capitan one, whatever that one was. Um, but I was looking, and it looked like there was one software up there that was open source and also didn't have these frequency issues that you mentioned. And so I was just curious why you didn't choose that one. Yeah, so the, the one you're mentioning is uh, the BMUs, um, but that, the reason for Capitan was because um, it's in Python, and all, only some fraction of code is in Fortran, F9, uh, Fortran 90. Um, but then we also didn't know BMUs until late. Uh, so it was just recently uh, released, but then I mentioned that because it could be a potential um, library to use for future work. But yeah, sorry, yeah, it's too far. <laughs> Great, yeah. thank you. All right, thanks. Time for one more question. All right, in that case, thank you very much. Thank you.